Hi, I'm Jason Huber, Director of Solutions Engineering here at Accio. And what Accio is, is a predictive AI platform that allows you to build machine learning models in just minutes. It will make it easy for anyone who wants to work with data to prepare, explore, and predict with their data. And that's what I'm going to walk you through today. Let's get started. And to do that, we want to upload a data set. Now, I've already done that. You can see that on the previous screen. But you can upload yours in CSV, Excel, JSON. You can pull in data from Salesforce and any of these other data sources like Snowflake or Google BigQuery if you have it available. Now, if there's somewhere you have your data that you don't see up here, let us know because we can probably just add it for you. I'm going to go back to the Accio logo. Delete this flow because I already have one. So let's start with the employee attrition. Now, this is the data set I uploaded earlier. And we do some exploratory data analysis. Within a minute or two, you'll see these sort of insights come out about your data. And you can see I'm telling the daily rate. What's the distribution of that data? Distance from home, if I click on that, I can see the distribution. How many rows? 1,400. Not a huge data set at all. How many unique values there are? And any correlations that we see between this column and the other columns or features in your data set. So you can see distance from home does have a direct correlation to attrition, stock option level, work-life balance, things like that. We can see that already. Now from here, I might want to do some things with my data. 80% of our time as data scientists are spent cleaning data. Accio makes that easy for you, especially if you're not a data scientist and you don't have access to the tools that we would normally use. We can standardize date columns, remove nulls, a whole bunch of different options here. Big ones are flag outliers, flag in liars, and clamp outliers. This is something normally you needed somebody with data science experience to accomplish. I could check these boxes, hit preview, and run that on my data set now. I don't need to, so I'm not going to take that step. But what I do want to do is add a new column. I think that the number of jobs that an individual has had directly correl correlates to how long they're likely to stay here. So let's create a new column. And let's just say that. Create a new column for average job length. And there we go. It comes back with creating a new column called average job length by dividing total working years by number of companies worked. If number of companies work is zero, we'll set average job length to total working years. So that's fine. We can say, well, it's, you know, if it's zero, then they've only worked at one job. That's perfect. So it takes what we typed in, create a new column for average job length, does all of that for us and creates that new field. I like that field. I'm going to hit apply transform. And now I've done what's called feature engineering. Again, we could do this in a variety of different ways. With chat data prep, makes it easy. We don't have to download the data set, use another tool, anything like that. I can also do things like filter rows. I know that a lot of youngsters will have a tendency to leave jobs early. So I can do things like this. Filter out any rows um, where age is less than 19. And there we go. Filter out any rows where the data set where the age column is less than 19. And it only removed 0.5% of the rows, so that seems good to me. I'm going to apply that transform as well. Now, maybe we don't know what we're really looking for in our data set. I think with the employee attrition, we can figure out some things we want to look at. But let's ask uh, Accio what we should be interested in here. So I'm going to go to Explore at the top. Now, that, those two things are saved. I'm done with those. I'll be able to use those in the next step as well. Show me in Insights about... So I just ask it to show me the insights about attrition relationship to other columns. Not even worded that great, but a very good example of what we can type in to say, hey, show me some insights. And there we go. It comes back with a table that says, well, attrition has a direct correlation to attrition. Distance from home, very high correlation. Number of companies worked, there you go. How about this? Maybe I, I need to ask. Let's just say, what other things should I ask about this data? There we go. It gives me 10 things that I might want to ask. What is the relationship between years since last promotion and attrition? Um, what is the relationship between job satisfaction and attrition? If I type those in, I can just copy and paste one. Let's see the result. And there we go. We can see job satisfaction versus attrition. So 
tell how many people we have, that sort of thing. We're just doing count in this case, but I can always adjust this. Now, if I really like this, I can save this to charts. It saves it in the report tab up here at the top, and I can see exactly what I want. And you can see I've done some things in the past as well that were pretty interesting. If I go back to Chat Explore, I can share this with you. So I can actually share this link with you, and then you can come back in here, and if I show Chat History, you can see these same chats and start working with me on my data. If I've made it public, then you can anybody with the link can do it. It's public. If I don't make it public, only people within my team can do that, and I control those permissions. Okay, let's go back to the data. Now that we've cleaned the data, we've prepped the data, we add a new column, filtered out some rows, things like that. We could do a lot more. And we've explored the data a little bit. Let's go ahead and do some predictions. Now, a few more things we could do is we could also merge data. We also do a fuzzy merge. So if you have an ID field, that's great. You can combine two data sets with an ID field. But if we do fuzzy merge, we can merge like on first name, last name, things like that. Even if they don't match exactly, we'll do a fuzzy match on that. I don't need to do that, so I'm going to predict. And if you look here, I can predict, I can forecast, and I can detect anomalies. For now, let's stick with predicting, but forecasting is something you may be interested in, and as well as detect anomalies in the future. So I'm using my training data set. I want to predict attrition. If I come down here, my training mode is going to be fastest. I have a few other options. When I get to production, I'm going to bump that up to production quality. But for speed while I'm iterating, I'm going to use fastest. And this just determines how much of the data set that I'm going to use to train. If I look down here, I have some advanced options as well. Prediction threshold, if you're familiar with that, we have the option to set that and adjust it and automatically retrain as well. Now, I, it says remove Accio badge here as well. You can completely white label Accio now on our enterprise plan. So I'm going to create predictive model. And what we do here is the 80-20 rule. So we take 80% of your data and we train the model. We train every single model we have that fits what you're trying to accomplish in the data types that you have. And then we take train every single model, then we take the 20% that's left that we didn't use to train. We act like we don't know the outcome, and we test each model against that 20%. Then we show you the best one. We'll also show you the other models we tried and how they scored. Now, it says 89.1% accuracy. What we're looking at is attrition is yes. How likely are they to attrit? I could always say attrition no here. But attrition, yes, is what we're interested, interested in. Now it says our performance for yes is 4.2 better than the baseline. So predicted yes are better than the baseline rate. I can click on the accuracy details and show you what we call the confusion matrix or what's called the confusion matrix, but we show it in a slightly different format. True positives, we got 29 out of 48, 60%. Here's the important one though. We've eliminated the negatives, the people who aren't going to leave the company, the employees who aren't going to leave the company. So that's pretty awesome. Um, we could work on that, make it a little bit better, I think. That's how we'd keep iterating on this data set. We also show you some more advanced things like precision, recall, and F1 score, if you're knowledgeable about that and if you're interested. And as you use the tool more, that'll be something that you'll want to look at. Now, I can show advanced model details here, and it'll tell you exactly which model we did choose, and it'll show you the other ones we looked at and what their scores were as well. Some other things we show you are the top fields. Over time, is a big contributor to whether somebody will attrit or not. It has a 10.24% in contributing to attrition of yes. That's interesting. I didn't realize that, and I didn't expect that. Um, it sounds like it might be some forced overtime or something like that. Years at company, if it's zero to two years, two to five, it goes down. And as you get more years with the company, the less likely you are to leave. Job satisfaction, direct correlation from one to four. We saw that in the explore step that I did earlier. So we see, you show you top fields, we could go back and maybe filter our data set, maybe do, take some action. We know a little bit more about our employees. It's giving us some insights. We still haven't got to the actual predictions yet where we can feed in a data set, but we will get there. Now top factors are, are very similar. It's showing you individual factors ranked by their contribution to the prediction result. Average job length, so it shows you here its rate of yes between zero and 1.83 factor frequency, and the impact of likelihood on yes. So these are our job average job length. These are our employees most at risk in this realm here. I close that one. You can look at years at company, zero through two. It makes sense with above, but these are our employees that are mostly at risk. So what we've done with some of these features is we've turned those into segmentation. Likely to yes says high attrition, high overtime. Their work-life balance is one. Their job role is laboratory technician. Their overtime is yes. We know that the relationship... Uh, satisfaction with their manager is a one that's very low in this data set. I can see some more about that as well. Number of companies worked is six. 
makes sense. They've changed jobs quite a bit, regardless of their tenure, but that could come in as well. So we've segmented those in yes. Let's look at unlikely to be yes. Job involvement is four. That's a high score. They're a healthcare representative. Job level is four, so they're a little bit higher in their level. Number of companies worked is five. That's, really, that's actually close to the likely yes as well. Business travel, they don't travel. Education is five. They're highly educated in this data set. So things like that, we can help you segment your data so you can make decisions based on different groupings and, and further filter your data down. We provide some additional insights at the bottom as well, like a decision threshold graph. We can adjust how many people are in, it, in each group, and we look at how this group uh, correlates to the base rate in group size and base rate. 82.1% is what I just adjusted to in the likely records. And then we show you some sample rows. We can also export this into a more printable or more shareable format if you want to. The next step we want to do is deploy this. It's great to get this insight. We can learn about, a lot about our data set, our employees in this case, but we want to deploy this. Now we deploy it in a variety of ways. Number one is our API. You can interact with your model using our API embedded in your application just by making some simple commands. A web application. This one I'll deploy right now, but this is a sample web application that you can use on your phone or on a browser, and you can give this to individuals to upload either a spreadsheet or do individual records like we'll do today to show their predictions against their data. We integrate with Zapier, back to Google Sheets, back to BigQuery, and of course, directly into Snowflake as well. So if I do the API, we can see that it's gonna say sample request, try it in your browser, there you go, it actually made the request, and what we give you is a couple things. Probability attrition is no, 0.63 in this particular sample data set, prob probability attrition is yes, 0.36 for this set of values. If I go back and I want to add another deployment, I'll do web app this time. Now we say, what do we want to deploy? It's going to choose my top fields here. This is the mobile view. This is the full view. I'm going to update deployment and web app, go to live app. Now age, I'll go ahead and put in some fictitious data here. Business travel, I'll say they travel frequently, daily rate, 33 department, research and development, distance from home. And I would continue to fill these out. Now we don't expect you to fill these out. I'm going to choose predict. What you would do is most likely upload a data set of all of your employees to see which ones are likely to leave the company or your data set that you want to predict against the future. This is a training data set. So these are employees that have or have not left over the past year, two years, five years, whatever it is. Now, if you're unsure in the future, you can always click what should my data set look like and we'll give you a sample CSV showing you which fields we expect to be in your data set so you can help format it that way. So you don't, ex you we don't expect you to do this manually by any means. Um, you can upload a data set with like 10,000 records in it. And there we go. Comes back with attrition, yes, in this case, probability, no, and probability, yes, 93%. And we know that um, because we know that we can say education be high, high travel, um, the daily rate was in environment satisfaction. So I think it's edu I'm sorry, it's environmental satisfa satisfaction and distance from home that probably contributed this based on what we learned before. So to recap, what we did was we created an entire flow from start to finish. We uploaded our data set, come from a variety of sources. We added a column, we filtered the data. We did some data cleaning. We didn't actually do it, but we could have. We did some chat explore. I saved some reports. I shared the chat explore with my team, so they're still playing with it. I did a prediction, we looked at some results, got some insights over time, being kind of the surprise factor there. And then finally we rolled it out in a way that we can consume it via the API or through the web app. Have fun.